don't talk about money or sex in America. Our guest today has been practicing attorney now for 40 years and has founded two companies, Corporate Direct and the Sutton Law Center. He has authored six publications that are part of the Rich Dad Poor Dad series, as well as his own book, Finance Your Own Business. With decades of knowledge, wisdom, and experience helping small businesses and business people protect their assets and structure their businesses, I am certain you'll be educated and enlightened today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my guest, Mr. Garrett Sutton. Garrett, man, we have so, so much to talk about. I love, uh, I know you're an attorney, and I love, love asset protection and how much it affects businesses. You, I know you've been an attorney for 40 plus, well, going on 40 years now. 40 years. And uh, I travel the world teaching and so forth, written seven different books, got a new book coming out October, I believe, October. which we'll talk about as well. But before we dive into all that stuff, right, I want to get to the, the crowd, the audience, the viewers to get to know you a little bit uh, about your background uh, of business, entrepreneurship, right, attorney. Uh, give us a quick 30,000 foot view. How, how, did, how did you end up uh, becoming an attorney? How did, how, did that, how did that start for you? Well, my dad was an attorney. Funny really? how that works out. And uh, so uh, I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh -huh. Brooklyn Hills, and my father was a judge for the Alameda County uh, Superior Court. And so around the table, I always heard about law topics. Okay. And one of the things I heard about was, you know, my dad would come home and say, gosh, this guy was a sole proprietor. If he'd been a corporation, he wouldn't have lost everything. <laughs> and so at an early age, I right. learned the importance of corporations. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, through that and through my dad, you know, preferring for me to be a lawyer, uh, I went to law school, so I the Bay to Hastings College of the Law in okay. San Francisco, sure. which is the University of California Law School in San Francisco. And my favorite topic was corporate law. Right. So, uh, you know, that's what I gravitated towards. And then I practiced law in San Francisco and Washington, D.C. And I came back. And I just time for a change, so I moved up to okay, and had to take the Nevada bar exam all over again. Wow! After 14 years of already being an uh, yeah attorney, and so I took the Nevada bar. I had spent all my summers up at Lake Tahoe. My grandparents lived up there, and okay. the skiing is great, and it's just you know an outdoor area. And so Nevada is also a great place to set up a court. So everything That's just worked out. That's a perfect match right there. Everything right? worked the, out. I cannot wait to talk about the Nevada corporation structures right. we're going to get into. Right. So you, you're practicing law now in Nevada. That's where you're based out of right now? Correct. Reno, Nevada. Okay. And uh, so your, your background is because your dad was the attorney, and that's what kind of led you into the whole process. There. Right. Did, did you or dad ever do the judge side of it? or just? I was a judge. Okay. And so, you know, he ran for office. When I was in sixth grade, I had to take posters all over town and <laughs> learn what it meant to run a campaign. And so he was a, he was a judge, and, and he really liked that job. He liked the judge side. I'm not sure I could do it. Yeah. You heard that the judge side uh, are, are loaded days. Like oh, yeah. When they go in the or whatever it is, it is like a wide open, long, long days repeatedly, which I don't think a lot of people know that, but they're like full long days the judges have. Well, and some of these cases, you know, you could tell when he had a tough case. When yeah. he came home at night, he was thinking about things. I mean, he had to make the call. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to his credit, he did. But, I mean, some of these decisions weighed on him. Interesting, man. Let me t talk to viewers. background. I know you have Corporate Direct, right? Uh, let's talk about what you have going on right now. What do you do? What service do you provide so that everybody just understands what you do right now? Well, Corporate Direct is a firm that sets up LLCs and corporations in all 50 states. Okay. Uh, and we also maintain them. So it's really important that yeah, once you piece. set it up, you've got to maintain it or mm. else you lose your protection. And so that's our focus is setting up okay. and maintaining corporations and LLCs in all 50 states. So you guys do all 50 states, you're based out of Nevada, right? but you, do, you can do corporations in any state Correct. And, and maintain them. Right. Let's talk about that just for a second. You talk about maintaining. 
I think it's a piece that I think a lot of entrepreneurs just don't understand. They almost feel like, hey, I set it up, I'm good to go, right? When you talk about maintaining, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? To uh, stay protected, you set it up and you have that corporate charter that gives you the protection. But if you don't follow some simple steps every year thereafter, you can lose your protection. Okay. One of them is you got to pay the state every year, right? right? I mean, this fees. Mm -hmm. You know, in Nevada, it's the third source of revenue behind uh, gaming and third source of revenue is yeah. the state filing fees for Right. Wow. And so you have to do the filing fees. You have to have a proper registered agent. If you forget mm -hmm. to do that, you can be sued and lose everything. Uh, you really should do the minutes every year. Right. The that's minutes what, that's of the meeting. pieces that people never, ever freak. do. But talk to me about, or talk to the viewers about what happens if someone were to start a corporation, either with an attorney or a CPA or themselves, not maintain it for a couple, several years and they end up getting sued, uh, can they penetrate the corporation soon? Yeah, it's called piercing the corporate veil. So uh -huh. the corporate veil gives you the protection, okay. but you haven't... Okay. ...want to get at the shareholder of the corporation who has assets. Okay. And by not following the formalities, the attorney with the judgment can say, the corporation didn't follow the formalities, so we're gonna right. go after the individual. And in half of all cases, the veil is pierced. Really? So a lot of wow. people are not taking care of business when it comes to this corporate protection. So let's go back to the point, because that's a mind-blowing yeah. figure that, yeah. that you're talking about right there. <clears throat> so you're saying that, <clears throat> ballpark, 50% of people that get sued that lose they end up piercing the corporate veil that these, that these people, business owners, entrepreneurs, whatever, have, have opened up? Yeah. All because, and w w what's the main reason they're piercing it? Is that what you're talking about? It, exactly right. Because the wow. corporation didn't have any money. Right. Right? So they get sued. The corporation doesn't have the money, but the shareholder has the money. The homeowner, whoever, whoever, whoever it is. It is. It, right? Yeah, sure. And so the attorney wants to get his share. Right. And so he says, Your Honor, these guys didn't follow the formalities. They haven't had a proper registered agent. They haven't uh, paid the state wow. the, the fees. And the courts go, yeah, I mean, on the face of it, you, they haven't followed the formalities. We're going to hold Joe, the shareholder, responsible. So that's how it leaves the, it leaves the corporation box or structure and it goes through the actual owner itself. Right. Is what it means the veil there? Right. So you set up the corporation and you want that veil protection. Right. But by not following the formalities every year after you set it up, the veil comes down. They pierce through the corporation to the individual. So a lot of the, that's just the actual corporation owner or manager, whatever it is, not doing their job responsibility right. as a corporation manager owner. That's costing them or could possibly cost them their entire life savings or house, personal house, whatever it is that they could put up, for, put up because they, they got to put it up because they got sued. Well, and so many people are doing this online. And they yeah. don't realize that there are these ongoing formalities. So, you know, what you don't know. Let's talk about that one for a second here, because yeah. I, I talk to a lot of people and it's amazing that there's so many people that do the online side of it, right? Without naming names, they go online, even if they go to Secretary of State, right. uh, dot .org or whatever it is, right? Yep. Uh, what's the negative? What, what, what do you see in all your 40 law firm, what, what does that end up doing actually? They, I think they're doing it because they're trying to save money. Oh yeah, they're trying to save money, but it's not that much more expensive to right. use a service. Uh, the one thing we mentioned, piercing the veil, right? They right. don't know that there are ongoing formalities. So right. they get the articles of incorporation back from the state. They don't know they're supposed to do more than that. Right. So that's a key one. The other one is sometimes they're, they're tax way. They set up the wrong one. Right? You set up an LLC and your tax is a C Corp. Right. And you hold real estate on a $400,000 sale. You'll pay 100000 more in taxes if you set up as a C Corp. <laughs> Just based off of how you set it and, up. And, and these people, you know, God bless them, but they don't realize that they need help. And it's really not that big of a, of a different uh, expense from using an attorney or, I mean, I know there's an upcharge there, but it's not that massive of an expense. Like, you know, it's like you're going to go from 200 to $5,000 to do this extra stuff. And really, if you're wanting to get protected, isn't that the right way to go about it? Is right. hiring somebody who actually knows how to go protect you? Exactly. And it's an expense, right? Is, is that, is that, do you know if that is a, without 
uh, the corporation side setting yeah. it up. So even that's a deductible uh, side of it. They're interesting. Right. Yeah, I think I think there's so many people that that it, with the technology right that go on that on that path right there, and it, it seems like it's a, opening them up for massive, massive attacks on the corporations there. And just in general speaking terms here for you, let's talk about we, earlier we were talking about maintaining uh, you know corporations. Uh, let's talk about setting up corporations, right? general sense is there one that you prefer over the other ones in, in a broad stroke 98 percent now are llc x is an s corp which is flow through or a c corp where there's double tax right or there's the llc okay. limited liability company which offers more asset protection in the right state than a corporation does. In some cases, we'll use a limited partnership, which is a, uh, an entity for certain circumstances that you would use, but the vast majority of them now are LLCs. And the beauty of the LLC is you can be taxed however you want. You can be taxed as an S corp, taxed as a C corp. Is that just, that's just choosing the tax structure of LLC right. there? Right. Is that something that you would help someone with when they're setting it up or? We would, we recommend that they have a, a CPA on their team. That goes to more of the CPA and, side and of it. And so we And the corporated side, the C Corp, is there a place in business for that side of it? Cause it seems like, so like you said, some people go with LLCs versus right. maybe a C Corp. Is there? And that is, uh, it's called section Go to stock. And sell it, there's no capital gains. Really? On the stock. So if you were selling the st stock or business, per se. Yeah, you would stock. For five years. Hold it for five years. If now, you were a C Corp. It can't be consulting, it can't be services. Right. But if, if you've got a manufacturing business, and you know, you would start out as a C Corp. You wouldn't be an LLC. You'd okay. start out as a C Corp, declare Section 1202, zero capital gains tax. Interesting. I yeah. did not know so that So that's one. one wrinkle where you would use the C Corp. Let me ask you this then. What about passed the new uh, tax laws, right? Just, I think, maybe two years ago, they passed right. some new tax. And they always are passing new tax laws, right? right. So that's nothing new. But Trump did a lot with the... Uh, C Corp, and I think he lowered the percentage, right, from like Correct. 38, 39 percent down to 21. Right. Does that change anything for the business owners to look into it more? It does. I mean, there are. With the S Corp, all the profits flow through. With the C Corp, you pay that 20 of the money. Protection from C to LLC? Um, the the C Corp does not, a corporation, whether it's C or S, mm -hmm. does not have asset protection unless it's set up in Nevada. Okay. Nevada is the only state in the union that has the order protection for corporate shares. So LLCs in Nevada, Delaware, uh, Wyoming, we like them because the key asset protection features the charging order, right. which is a lien on distributions. But no other state has that for corporations except Nevada. Well, let's talk about that for a second. It's an interesting point you brought up. You mentioned, you always hear this stuff about Nevada corporations, right? And there's like, everywhere you go, people talk about Nevada, Wyoming, De Delaware. Right. Break those down. Why do people, why, why are they using those so much? I know you mentioned charging orders or lien order there. Is there anything else why people are using those? If you live in Delaware, there's a, a tax. But if, you know, Nevada, corporate tax, no personal income So tax. even if someone lived in maybe a, a, a hair salon that they have, right? If they lived in Kansas, a corporation and opened up in Nevada, right. let's say where you're based out of, um, they wouldn't have to pay state taxes because their corporation in Nevada and then qualify a business in Kansas, okay. which is done okay and then you're part of the kansas tax system earning money in right, kansas, kansas. kansas you got to be in the their tax and and the charging order so that's the a wrinkle that people don't focus on and uh, let's dive into a little bit what do you mean i think most people probably don't even know what you mean when you say charging order i know there. let's talk about that what does that mean how does that protect someone 
assets. Now, I always recommend that people have car insurance and sure. umbrella insurance, but if you don't have the proper insurance and you're in a horrific wreck, right. uh, see, for example, the car wreck victim go to court and say, hey, this guy owes me money for a car wreck. Mm -hmm. And the California court would say, you're right, have at the asset inside the California LLC. So that's no asset protection. Well, I'll be positive there. What if, um, in the, the example you gave there, in the car accident, what if uh, the car was a personal car, not a business car? Does that, does that change it at all? Doesn't matter. You're Doesn't a driver. Doesn't change it at all. Not. You know, you're as a driver, a driver you're okay. responsible. Interesting. So you're, you get in the car wreck, and instead of the California LLC, we have a Wyoming LLC okay. that holds other state LLCs. against you and they want to collect and, and and Wyoming law charging order whereas in California they can barge in and force a sale of all your real estate in Wyoming they get a court order that you have to wait around for the LLC to pay They get mm -hmm. a percentage of what they collect. Right. They don't want to have to hire an attorney to go to Wyoming and get a charging order and monitor it. They're better off going to Delaware, I think you mentioned, on this charge. If someone gets sued, they just can't, they can't run into that corporation and, and, and force distribution or force sales of things. Correct. They have to wait. So if someone, let's, let's go to your example again, if someone in Oklahoma had a, corp a business there and was running ABC business, got sued. They go in and into that corporation and uh, make them force sales and Correct. so forth. I've heard these horrible, right? Like involuntary foreclosure, right? right? Involuntary bankruptcy, right? Yep. Those are scary terms that are floating around out there. Um, does the does those states kind of are, are kind of preventing that from Wyoming, Nevada, and Delaware? Yeah. Stop that as well, huh? Right. So is that that's kind of one of the reasons why everybody's setting it up in the right there. Right. Is there any different privacy? Well, Wyoming has good privacy. Your name is not listed on the state website as uh -huh. being a member or man. Privacy built in. Wyoming is only $52 a year. Say it again. The state filing fee. The filing fee is $52 yeah. there in Wyoming? Yeah. Versus other states. Filing All right. Fees. Uh, Nevada's $350. $350. California's $800. Eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars per entity per year. Per year, you got to go pay. That. No matter if, even if you're not making money, it's irrelevant. Yeah, you still got to pay that every single year. Correct. And that's going back to what you said earlier. That could be one of those. If you don't pay it, you could end up using it later in they a pierce, lawsuit. They pierce, because the, they pierce veil. the veil. Right. So Wyoming is how much you said? Fifty-two dollars a year. Fifty-two dollars a year, and it gives you privacy. What do you, what do you mean by privacy? What does well, it do for someone? If someone's looking to see what assets you have, okay. they can do an asset search and they can go on to the websites of the various states uh -huh. and name. Right. And what you own. Because your corporation pops up, houses then would it pop up. It shows up that you're an owner of this corporation, this LLC. We'd prefer Wyoming where they don't even collect. people who are looking right? so you're going to tell the truth if if you're in front of a judge yeah I own a Wyoming LLC but then the judge would respect the fact that you'd set it up charging order is the only remedy they have interesting and again most attorneys don't want to get into this they rather have enough insurance so we always argue that insurance is the first line of defense. Okay. Right? Home insurance, auto insurance, you get the two of those together, you get the umbrella policy for a couple of a year. Right. It's just not very expensive insurance. So as an asset protection attorney, you're kind of recommending one of the biggest plays they could make. And structures the second line of defense. Right. So. Uh, that it's very difficult for the attorneys to get at your asset. 
is, I think, I was talking to someone just recently, a couple nights ago, and it's like, mind of getting sued, right? They have a party at their house or a, you know, a business, uh, and, and, uh, maybe they have a, a multi-level marketing, right? Right. or whatever it is. And I some of the friends that they were like worried about again, filming LLC, say a house in, let's go to Texas, right, for this example. Could that still protect them on that charging order, even though it happened at their personal house? Would that still help them? If they lost the judge, lost the suit, got the judgment against them, would it still help them? Well, is unique because you have the unlimited homestead there, so your house is protected sure. in Texas. But let's say you're in Missouri, okay. right? And the homestead is only fifteen thousand dollars, and they're coming after. Property into an LLC, right? And you know, say the property is in Missouri. claim against the Missouri LLC, had, the car wreck had nothing to do with the Missouri property. Right. They want to get at the Missouri property. They have to fight through Wyoming, okay. right? Because that's what you own. Right. And Wyoming says, sorry, all you get is the charging order. Even all that, you, you get, get is what's distributed. Missouri may not distribute to Wyoming. Interesting. Then nothing distributed. To and really, and the, when you have that charging, you don't have to distribute you don't want to do you as a business owner you can say i'm not doing distributions this year or next right. year or the next year right you can still get paid though yeah you're going to pay tax someone's going to pay tax on that but you don't have to distribute the money you don't distribute the money though right. you can take it out as salary or right. you can take it out as other other form of loans or so forth right exactly you still get the money out you're not locked in by not getting the money out you just choose not to do distributions that year you know and andrew what really happens is we don't see many cases brought against the llcs right it's just not a good use of the attorney's you, time. I was going to ask you, do you think as an attorney that when attorneys kind of see maybe a Wyoming structure or Nevada structure and so forth, does it kind of, do they kind of look at that and think, man, I don't know if I want to go down that road uh, versus maybe if they're in Missouri LLC, does, do those states, attorney's perspective, kind of detour the attorney a little bit? Well, certainly having the Wyoming LLC own all your other property holding LLCs, that is a real deterrent. Yeah. You know, in asset protection, we want to uh, put forward roadblocks that are either real or perceived. Okay. Right? Right. And, you know, some of these are perceived roadblocks, but if that attorney does not want to mess with the Wyoming LLC, that's to your advantage. Yeah. That's a unique word you use right there, perceived. Uh, go, go, to, go a little bit deeper than that one mean with asset protection. Well, I mean, some someone's going to with Wyoming. They're not even going to see right. that you own an LLC, and you know the perception is you don't have anything. Yeah. So if they really push, they you know they get a judgment against you. You got to tell the truth in court. Sure. And so a perceived roadblock that keeps people away from you is a good thing. Yeah, so I, I heard uh, sometime an attorney talk about asset protection attorney talking about it's like running a race and having the hurdles. You can just keep, yeah. keep putting hurdles, if you will, in front of the person. Right. And then you can have a perceived hurdle just as well as a real hurdle you right. can put there as well. The key is, you know, when you go into court, you got to tell the truth. Yeah. You know, and if you haven't set these LLCs up ahead of time right. before you're sued, it's too late. Uh, about uh, setting them up late, that's the key word right there. What does that mean, too, if you set it up too late? Well, I have buying a duplex, mm -hmm. and uh, I said, well, you should put to an LLC, and what does that cost? And I said, well, in California, the fee is $800 per year. And she goes, oh, I, I can't afford that. <laughs> and so the next Cisco, she comes up to me and says, you know, the tenant sued me over the duplex. I'd like to set up the LLC now. Well, yeah. it's too late at that point. You know, why is it too late? I hear this all the time, why is it too late? Is it a, is it a legal thing, a judge thing? Why is it too late? Because when the tenant sued, uh -huh. the property was in her indiv individual name. Okay. She's individually responsible. Mm -hmm. Now, trying to put the uh, away from the reach of creditors is called a fraud. Right. And any the term, oh, uh, we don't want dirty, to do that. Yeah. That's a dirty word right yeah, there. Yeah, and I can't help. Someone, Ethically, I can't help. If someone got sued and they don't have the corporation, really, overall, it's really too, mine is defending it and trying to go to court. It's really too late to do any type of 
asset protection structure at that point, right? Right. Because anything you move is going to get classified as that conveyance right there, that fraudulent Attorneys have a real day. Yeah. When you move assets to avoid a judge. Yeah, because they feel like you're trying to manipulate the system. Penalties, or, or, all sorts yeah. of issues. If someone listening right now does not, say they are they are in business right now, and maybe they're a sole proprietor right now. Right. Um, do they have to, can they just go start their new corporation now through you, or do they have yeah. to go to shut the business down or rename like that? Is there any hurdles it's they really got to It's really easily done, right? So you're a sole proprietor. We set up that LLC to run the corporation through, uh -huh. and you'll do a half year tax return as a sole proprietor, then you'll have a half year tax return as the LLC. It's flow through it, so it's not gonna be difficult. Yeah. Uh, one of the th keys about it needs to say manager of the LLC. You need to have notice out there that you're operating as an LLC. So you would have to make that change as well. You'd have to open up a new bank account. That's also getting back to what you said earlier where when you go online, you just don't know those certain things right. and you keep signing as your personal name, which, which could end up biting you in the, in the tail later. Plenty of horror stories with that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, there was a client who came to us after this happened but he had an LLC. Right. He signed a lease in his individual name. He wanted it for the LLC. Mm -hmm. But the landlord said, look, I thought I was dealing with you personally. And he was uh, held personally liable for that lease. Just because how he signed it on the line right there. Right. So is the, is the trick there, if you will, to have the word manager and you're signing it? Is that, is that the overall trick? Uh, yeah. Not trick, but code or rule if you it's want. It's the corporate you formality. It. It's the right thing to do. So you really, as a, as a you should be na known as manager. Right. And, and, and are you manager of the corporation? Is that what you are? Manager well, of the you're company? president, uh, typically president or, or secretary of a corporation. Okay. You're manager of an LLC. Okay. Now, some people think, you know, manager sounds too lowly. Right. I mean, yeah. It sounds like a McDonald's uh, manager, sure. right? Your comma CEO to make them to feel convey, better. Or? Yeah, to make them feel better. Yeah, it's basically to make it feel better. You yeah. could just leave manager, and it would have the same purpose. It has on the it. same effect. But if you don't do it that way, you could actually be off up for more uh, failure. Your judgment's coming against you as well. You know, and business owners need to know this stuff because they they get they're in a hurry to get in business, and right. it's great starting business. Right. Our country needs that right now. Yeah. So people are starting businesses. They're in a hurry corporation or LLC, but they need to know there's a rear guard action, right? right. You got to get the rear guard. You got to sign as manager. You've got to have that separate bank account. Uh, you need your cards and contracts to say LLC. This is doing business with you personally. Right, right. For I wanna, which you're personally responsible. I want to kind of uh, wrap this point up, but I, and, but I want to come back to a point you just mentioned. You, you made, said an interesting statement there. You said it's important in our country that people are opening up businesses. I want to I get your thoughts on what that means right there. But for the viewers, uh, let me come back in just a second. I want to circle back and make sure we wrap it up for the listeners. Even if they have a business right now, we were talking about this, it doesn't matter where they are at right now, how they've ran it in the past, however they had a strong past. What time of the year it is? They don't need to wait till January first to go no. reset it. They should really go now, no matter right. where they're at, what time of the year they're at. If they're profitable or losing, it doesn't really matter. They should go change that and move it to the, to the LLC side of it right now. Well, because you're talking about your lifetime. Uh -huh. If you're a proprietor and they sue your business, that's a claim against you personally, and they get a judgment. They can renew it every seven years. Right. This it thing stays. doesn't go away. Yeah, it stays there, sure. And so you just need, at, at, as soon as you can, right. to set up that corporation or LLC and start operating that way. Now, for the prior two years mm -hmm. that you operate as a sole proprietor, if someone sues or responsible, if the if the is good, right, right. But from that day that you start. Operating Said it's important in the country that uh, we are opening businesses and so forth. What does that mean? What do you mean by that? America's wealth is based on small business and real right. estate. And I, I just think uh, when I got out of school during the summer right. and, and pay my tuition, and now 
you know, my last kid got out and it was 50,000 a year. I don't know how these kids do it. But anyway, in my generation, people got out of school and started businesses. Right. They had enough student debt. And it's just, young people should be able to start businesses instead of, you know, dealing with 10 to 20 years of student debt. People who are on the edge of selling their business or retiring are just going to shut down. Right. Right. And so there are new opportunities right now yeah. for younger people to start businesses. When this all clears, we're going to see a lot of businesses that have closed. And so I think there's tremendous amount of opportunities now. Yeah. Go back to, I want to go both of those points. You got a lot of good nuggets there. So, but go back to the, the talk, talking about opening a business in America. Is that a, in how business, I think people don't understand how much small business actually stimulates and moves the economy. We always look at Fortune 500 companies as, right. as the ones that are doing everything. Right. But really, majority of the corporations that are out there are actually small businesses, corporations, not comes through there. Right. Plenty of new, uh, uh, new ways to do business, new business models. Um, so I just think that the country needs the energy of young people of the young starting new business. Starting new business because yep. it creates jobs, it creates yeah. income, it creates opportunity, right? Um, I think it's one of the things that uh, kind of kind of maybe maybe frustrates me a little bit because sometimes we get into certain areas where it's like super red tape and they, they just they overdo this side of red tape where it's, like, it's almost like sometimes you feel like it, it's harder to start the business. Well and a lot of Wow come on really uh, you know and so all these requirements keep people out of business, right? right? The existing dog groomers benefit by <laughs> a barrier to sure. entry to the market. So there's been a lot of uh, writings lately in the mm. last couple of years that these business license requirements are too onerous. Just getting out of hand. They're, they're keeping people out of business. Yeah. Um, example, if you want to start a business in San Francisco, a small uh -huh. retail mom and pop shop, it takes over a year to get a permit wow. from the city to open up to open a, a business. store. And, and people in San Francisco are wondering, why are small businesses leaving? Well, it's hard to run a business there. Yeah. And so you see this like mass exit of, like, say, California, just in general. To use an example of just businesses constantly leaving, right, to Texas or Utah, whatever it is. A lot of that, is that a lot has to do with, you know, with your setting up corporations, is a lot have to do with taxes and, and the red tape you're referring to, that they're just, they're just out of it, they're, they don't want it anymore? Correct. I mean, in, in Reno, every 10th plate now is a California license really? plate. Wow. It, it just all sorts of Californians uh, coming in because um, it's very, the, the taxes there yeah. are extremely difficult. Right. The regulations get tough to open up a business. And, you know, people just, they vote with their feet. And right now there's a stampede out of California. Yeah, I even saw recently there was a, I was talking to another guest, he was talking about there's actually a website you can go to where it actually shows like all the companies that have, are leaving, right. looking for other other states and so forth. And right now, you know, if you've seen these articles about Elon Musk uh, and all the stuff he's doing with Tesla, California uh, on this different stuff, right? Regulations and all this stuff where he's, he's like saying, hey, I'll, I'll take the entire plant yeah. and move it right now. Right. It's crazy how much that Sometimes you hear the word deregulation and regulation. Right, you hear those terminologies in politics right. all the time, right? Uh, is that is that what that's referring to when you say red tape and so regulating, yeah. regulating yeah. a business? So Elon Musk came to Nevada, okay. and uh, the uh, city outside of Reno is called Sparks, yeah. and there's an industrial park outside of there. Uh -huh. And uh, he asked the uh, county official, uh, "Well, how long is it going to take me to get a permit for mm -hmm. this?" Sparks, in, outside of Sparks. Uh, said, okay. And so the official goes, "Hold on one minute." Walks into the other room and hands him the permit. <laughs> Took him five minutes. <laughs> or a year. Yeah. Those are your two choices, yeah. right? right? And in those five minutes, he got his, he got his license or and permit to go start the business there. Uh, or because in Nevada, in that area, because all states kind of have their own regulations. Well, they compete it, against each other, yeah. right? And, and it's, not a, it's not so much a federal process as much as a state process. And there's almost like friendly states and unbusiness friendly states yeah. to a certain degree right. that's, that's out there. And is that the same way in asset protection as well? There's some states that are more asset protection friendly versus not? Yeah, California is very unfriendly. On asset protection. On asset protection. Their laws are among the weakest 
in the country. Where it hurts the business owners. Yeah, unless you own assets in California or a business in California, you would never set up a California entity. It's expensive and yeah. they're weak. They're just really weak. Uh, New York, Georgia, even Utah's law is not really great on yeah. LLCs. What are some um, of the stronger ones? Well, we mentioned Wyoming, Nevada, Delaware, yeah. uh, Alaska, and South Dakota are strong. I hear a lot about Florida, Texas. Decent, where they at? Fall They're out. good, but Florida and Texas don't protect the single member LLC, one owner LLC. Yeah. Uh, whereas Wyoming and Nevada and Delaware, in their statute, in, in the sure. code, says single member LLCs are protected to the maximum extent of the law. Yeah. And that's what you want. I don't know, in Florida, which is where I'm located at, I had to open up LP, get that charging protection right there. Right. Uh, because they didn't have the single member, I had yeah. to do a FLP. Correct. Uh, family Limited Partnership is what I went with versus a. Uh, uh, the coronavirus and how it's going to create opportunity in the markets, right? right? And I read uh, some, some previous blogs, I think you just written, and you mentioned it, uh, you referred to it. What, what do you mean by black swan? What does that mean, coronavirus and black swan? Well, black swans are very rare. Uh, uh -huh. And so in English literature, when they. Usual. And, you know, COVID, we, throughout human history, you've had pandemics. Right. But in the last hundred years, this is pretty unusual. And so they call it a black swan event, okay. just an unusual event. Uh, but it, what's interesting is in contracts, uh, at the very end, when you're really tired of reading the contract, it's <laughs> They, they put it at the very end, uh, which is why you have to read the whole contract. The whole contract yeah. in fine print. In the fine print. But they have exclusions yeah. for uh, having to do business or insurance coverage. And a black swan event, uh, an unusual event that no one anticipates you from contractual obligations. Yeah. And a black so, swan event could yeah. relieve you from contractual obligations. Correct. Wow. Yeah. Think it will will the coronavirus be considered a black swan? There's all sorts of litigation coming. Really? Yeah, I think it will. You think it yeah, will be? Yeah. And that again, uh, uh, people that are leasing real estate side, that's that's up for question. Okay. Right. Uh, right. Right. Say your supply chain in China was disrupted. There's no way you can get the supply. You can't the uh, black swan event right in some cases wow. now also on an insurance basis a lot of these insurance contracts will have certain exclusions uh -huh. right terrorism acts of war acts of god and uh after the sars epi epidemic in 2006 2006 right the insurance company put in all their uh insurance industry put in all their contracts pandemics they added that as, word to as it. an exclusion interesting man so but there's going to be more litigation on this issue coming uh, on the coronavirus and black swan yep virus uh you think it's going to create opportunity in the marketplace for different yeah. people yeah i think uh as i mentioned business owners are you know we're, we're thinking of selling the business mm -hmm. we're, we're going to retire and it may be too tough to come back. right and they may just close shop right and i just think if uh on and, and, and young business owners in their local market, they're going to be opportunities. like that. Every, every, every good and bad, yeah. right, creates opportunities for those that are paying attention, right? Right. And uh, this would be one of those that I think creates opportunities. It, it will hurt some, of course, yeah. and just like the 08 crash, but it also creates opportunities for others as well. Now, one little note on that is I, I talked to these business broker friends. Mm -hmm. And I say, are, are, are a lot of people selling? Right. And they say, you know what's interesting is a lot of people are looking to buy. Mm. There are a lot of buyers coming into the market, bottom feeding, yeah. right? Looking for opportunities. So these two guys say, market to buy, then we have sellers. It always creates one side or the other side. It always right. creates one side. I, I, I think it's so unique how it's, it, it will all, the market, I always think it will go back to 08 and how it affected so many people, but that also at the bottom of it, so many people created massive amounts of wealth yeah. at the bottom of right. it, right? And it exploded, and, and, and I think the coronavirus will be somewhat to the sim similar of the same thing. Right, well, these cycles are gonna, never gonna end, Yeah. right? Yeah, I wanna talk about your uh, books. Uh, many, many, many books, and 
uh, I was telling my crew I was so excited to have you on because as I was getting started, 19, 18 years old, 19, 19 years old, I started reading books on business. I had no background in business. Right. I wasn't in business school. And one of the very, I would say in the top 10 first books that I read was your book, uh, I believe at that time it was called Own Your Own Corporation right. that you wrote. And you were an advisor for, for Rich Dad for a little bit, right? So it's Poor dad, yeah. and became an overnight sensation. Mm -hmm. I mean, he sold over 30 million around the world. An advisor series to supplement his right. and uh, financial education. And I was fortunate enough to become the rich dad advisor for corporations and asset protection. Yeah. And so they asked me to write this book, Own Your Own Corporation. And, uh, you know, I'd always wanted to write a book on corporations, and I did it in, th in three weeks. You wrote the whole book? Yeah, I just had two kids. I said to my wife, take the kids, I'm writing this book. Yeah. And I got it done quickly, and uh, it was great. It came out, and it sold like hotcakes yeah. when it first came out, because Rich Dad Poor Dad was this sensation, and mm -hmm. I was certainly just riding on Rob Robert's coattails. Sure. Yeah. And he's just a great editor, you know, he to pursue their financial education, which, you know, they don't teach in school, unfortunately. Right. They've had so much, uh, I mean, he's helped affect and, and transfer so many people's lives, right? The, the whole rich dad philosophy. I think it's super cool, unique, and props to you for getting on that advisory board, because that's a massive pl uh, uh, plug there for you. But to have a little bit of the background, you tell me some stuff in my office earlier about how you actually kind of got that gig uh, with the advisory team right there. Tell, tell the audience, cause I think it's a story that no one's ever, I've never heard it before. Yeah. Tell them how you kind of, because he was interviewing different people and so he forth. He was interviewing different Nevada attorneys, mm -hmm. and so I go down and uh, it turns out that I had played rugby. Right. And he really liked that fact because uh -huh. Robert loves rugby. So unique. He can't stand football or soccer, but he loves rugby. Right. And he played for the Hawaii Harlequins, which was a okay. really good touring team. That's how he got fun in love yeah. with it. Yeah. And uh, I played for my law school, Hastings Law School. Okay. And uh, so the fact that I had played rugby uh, sealed the deal. Sealed the deal for you, yeah. push on the top. That's yeah. so, I thought it was so unique that rugby is what ended up closing right. uh, the deal. I've heard a lot of deals close on a golf course, never a rugby. <laughs> you brought me two here. You brought uh, loopholes, of the real, uh, loopholes of real estate, and you also brought uh, uh, Start Your Own Corporation. Now, this is a revised version Correct. of the one that I originally read that law is always changing, updating, and so forth. And this is now start your own corporation. Right. And that you also talk about you. And I would say, well, you know, I've started the corporation. Now what takes it from you've started the company. Now what do you have to do? You have to follow the corporate formalities. You're going to try and sell the business. Uh, you know, OSHA comes by. Right. All those types of issues are in run your own corporation. Okay. So that's why we split it up. And had own your own and then run, run your own corporation as well there. Yeah, start your own and start then your own. start your own and run your own. Now, if they want to get a copy of the book, where's the best place? you were to get any of your books right now you have seven of them out but what's the best place to get well them i can't for some reason i can't sell them cheaper than amazon so they're all on amazon they're all on amazon right yeah. now uh for any of your books that you have or well kindle audio and all versions now i've got i've got seven uh different titles here i'm going to yep. read through some of these for you uh you got start your own corporation run your own corporation we just talked about writing winning business plans yep uh, from an attorney abc's of getting out of debt how do you LLCs and LPs. LP stands for limited partnership. Limited partnerships. Buying and selling a business. Loopholes of real estate and the toxic client. So far, out of all the ones you've written so far, which one is your favorite one that you that you've enjoyed the most? Loopholes. Loopholes of uh, real estate yep. right here. That's your favorite one. And by loopholes, are you referring to the tax side? Well, you know, loopholes has somewhat of a negative connotation, sure. but I go through the origin of the term. Uh -huh. uh, which is an escape, right? And so for uh, tax, you want to maximize the tax loopholes. Right. For law, you want to minimize the legal loopholes, Okay. right? So you want to use LLCs and you want to protect yourself. 
So uh, the loopholes of real estate covers opening the tax loopholes and closing the legal loopholes. If someone is out there that doesn't actually maybe do real estate right now, maybe they're just a regular business owner, would a lot of the same loopholes still apply? Um, talk to me about, you talk about taxes a lot. Why would, why would a, a protection side of it. What's the connection there between the two? Well, you know, I, I don't practice tax law. Right. You know, I always refer to CPAs, mm. but in so many of these books, they don't kind of down and explain it in an understandable manner. And right. so that's what I like to do. So, you know, one of the key things is depreciation, okay. right? People should know how to take advantage of depreciation. Mm -hmm. Also with real estate, they need to know about the 1031 exchange. Sure. I mean, that is just a great technique right. uh, for uh, uh, many real estate. Uh, it's a little bit different off topic a little bit from your, 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 the attorney side, but talking about the loopholes there and 1031 exchange, maybe you think of, do you, do you ever talk about, or, or maybe not in the book, but do you ever talk about maybe the other podcasts or so forth, about any of the Roth style investing, the self-directed, 401k yeah, kind of a skeptic on that uh -huh. you know, the, I just think the prohibited transaction rule is strict yeah there's a lot of, a lot of stuff and on the there prohibited. are a lot of promoters out there selling these things and uh -huh. you know the cases are starting to come out right the audience is quick what do you mean by prohibited transactions well there? if you own an IRA uh, you know the government wants you to have that account retirement right right because social security is not going to be there for us mm -hmm. so they want you to have your own money for retirement mm -hmm. and they don't want you wandering that money so they don't want you getting into these investments that some or you're going to squander it on your own and so they have these rules that limit you from getting into certain transactions and one is you can't sell your own property to your ira right that's a prohibited a transaction no -no. Yeah. You can't use your IRA to buy yourself a vacation home, right? And so, and people do, or they'll stay there for one week on a vacation and but a prohibited, which would, in which accounts it in, in a Roth, it could uh, a waterfall you know, affect the entire freaking account there. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's, is a, it's, it's as if you distributed mm -hmm. your retirement account to you, right? along with penalties and interest. Right. And age, all the different stuff there. Yeah. Uh, you have a new book coming out, though. I do. And I'm excited about your new book because I love your information here. What's your new book title? What's it called? Scam Proof Your Assets. <laughs> Scam Proof Your Assets is your right. new book. Right. Uh, yeah, for, okay, so first, when does it come out? Give the audience, when, is, when does it come out? End of October. End of October year. 2020. Uh, the book's going to be coming. Scam Proof Your Assets. Guarding Against Widespread Deception. Okay, you, I got to dive into this. <laughs> uh, but uh, th my brain is running now on this title that you have here. Um, uh, and it's available at your website, uh, Corporate Direct, or back to Amazon as well? Both. Uh, uh, okay, Amazon or CorporateDirect.com. Right. Okay. And it, is CorporateDirect.com, just for the viewers here, that's your website. Does it, is it only for the law stuff, or is that more of the educational side? We have a, pl a lot of educational materials there. It's the website where if someone in one of the 50 states uh -huh. wants to set up a corporation or an LLC, they can go to the website, get information. They can find out how to get a free 15 minute consult. Great. So it's an educational site. Great, great. Uh, okay, let's go to this book, man. Scam proof your assets. What does that mean? Well, it means that we are a great number. Okay. And Americans are losing billions and billions of dollars every year. And we have anecdotal evidence that people are committing suicide after right. being scammed. There's so much shame wow. associated with it that people are actually taking their own life after they've been scammed. After they've been scammed because they feel so embarrassed, so forth, that they sent money to someone or whatever it may be. Well, and that's the problem is it's not, we don't have the correct numbers on it because uh -huh. people will not report it. They're ashamed. Sure. They don't want to admit that they've been scammed. In some cases, they've been scammed by family members. Right. Which makes it even. Take more steps uh -huh. to go after these scamsters, right? Because now they act with impunity, yeah. and they're learning skills to take down power grids, mm -hmm. transportation systems, 
be argued that they should uh, uh, license bounty hunters. <laughs> cyber bounty hunters, yeah. like the bounty hunters that a bell bombing or whatever it may yeah. be. And now you're talking about cyber bounty hunters, where yeah. they're looking for these people yeah. on a private sector, basically, mm -hmm. uh, from the, and looking for these uh, And the government pays artists. a reward. Yeah. And, and the U.S. Constitution allows for bounty hunters. Interesting. Under the War Powers Act. Yeah. So I write about it in the book. Oh, but they are legal under the U.S. Constitution. The government can mm -hmm. hire privateers. Interesting. I want to ask you a couple questions here. I, I do a little section here called uh, uh, Your Garrett Sutton Favorite uh, Items. Okay. Okay. And I just kind of go through this pretty in a, a quick note here, but just some of the your favorite items, right? So let's talk about this one first. What is your favorite social media platform? Well, because all my high school friends are on Facebook, okay. that's the one I use. That's what you use the most is yeah. Facebook. Are you, are you heavy into social media? Is that something you don't really, not a big thing for no, you? I'll look at it once a day or something. Okay, so you're yeah. not an avid poster making a bunch of selfies and so forth on it? No. Is that your game right no, now? No, I don't do kittens, food, or anything like that. <laughs> all right, so uh, Facebook's your answer there. Favorite place to travel? Well, I love Jackson Hole. and Yellowstone is uh -huh. just a really beautiful part of the world. So that's your, that's your go-to place yeah. in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Uh, your favorite holiday? Uh, Fourth of July. Really? Yeah. Uh, so many people say Christmas. Right. And you're going Fourth of July. For the opposite reason. With okay. the Fourth of July, you don't have to buy anyone a gift. <laughs> right? There's so, no, no money had to be spent for the gift. I don't have to go shopping. Yeah. I just Especially get to. Especially now because you're, you're, you have the children. And uh, I was going to ask you, are you at the point where you're starting to have grandchildren at this point? Uh, no, not. It's coming. It's coming. It's so going to be I have there. Twin girls that just got out of university, okay. and my son is at the University of Wyoming Law School. You really like Wyoming. I do. Yeah, your kids go to college there. You vacation there. Yep. Your corporations are there. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, fa favorite uh, holiday was uh, favorite movie. It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life with the Jimmy Stewart. Unique one, unique follow-up question here. The black and white version or the new colored version of it? I like the black and white. The old school, the yeah. black and white yeah, one. Yeah, it just gets me in the mood. Yeah, yeah. that's a good, good Christmas one. And, and I like it because it, it talks about the banking system. It's actually it's right. some, a little bit of business some, in there, you know, right? Some, some of those old movies. Some, some fractional notes and so forth. Some of those old movies really delved into business issues. Yeah. You know, if you look at movies from the 30s and 40s, uh -huh. they talk about business issues much more than they do now. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's all very uh, soft and well, or exploding. Yeah, exploding, blowing yeah. up, so forth right now. Uh, all right, uh, last thing I got for your favorite. Let me ask you, what is your, what is your favorite influencer? Your influencer. Well, it influencer. has to be Robert Kiyosaki. And, okay. you know, not sure. because I have to. True. I'm on the phone all day uh, talking to people who've reached Dad, Poor Dad, mm -hmm. have taken steps, start a business to invest in real estate. Let me ask you this, is there any corporation, go by the corporation structure, Wyoming and, and, and uh, the different states there, is there any corporation uh, or LLC that you do not like, you do not recommend, because there's a lot of choices that are Right. Well, like, matter of fact, let's talk about that first. What are some of the, of the choices? You have C's and LLC, you have S Corps, you have uh, FLPs and GLPs. Right. What are some of them? Name, name some of those off for the audience there. Well, the main ones are corporations, be okay. it taxed as a C or S. LLCs, which can be taxed however you want. Okay. Uh, limited partnerships, which are okay in some cases, but you have to set up two entities to be protected. Okay. The general partner has to be another entity, so you have to set up two entities. Um, those are the main ones. And then, you know, so many people are sole proprietors. Right. In society, and that is just a bad way to go. Okay. Uh, it's very easy to set up, but with that comes no protection. Right, right. And then general partner is even worse. Really? Because, yeah, you uh, are responsible for your partner's mistakes. Interesting. Right? In a sole proprietor, you're responsible for your own mistakes. Okay. But in a general partner, your, your partner has a contract and you're personally responsible for it. You sign the contract, even though you told the partner not to sign it. To go online and yeah. say, well, it says general partners, let's do that one. Right. And you did that one. Yeah. That's what you're saying. You could be held reliable uh, for their mistakes now. Correct. That's the ugly entity. Wow. Yeah. So that's the one you hate the most, if yeah, you will? Yeah, that would be the, hate, the, the one I hate the most. The one you hate the most. I won't say people. Now, talk a little bit about sole proprietorship because you said, obviously, most people are sole proprietors, I think. Yeah. Is that just because 
they have this idea, they do this business, and then they just don't do anything, so they naturally become a sole proprietor? Is that, is that, how they, is that why there's so many, or do you have to set a proprietors? You have, to go to the, you have to go to the county if you're uh, going to open up a sole proprietor, and it's going to be XYZ uh, Lawn Care. Sure. We're going to write checks out to okay. XYZ Lawn Care. Go to the county and file a statement uh, called a DBA statement, okay. doing business as. With that, you can open up a bank account and receive checks as XYZ Lawn Care. Sure. Now, people think that having proprietor. There's no protection there at all, right? None. It's basically the, them and the sole proprietorship are really the same thing. Yeah. So you get process. sued on the lawn care deal. Right. And they can get the truck and equipment, but they can get your personal assets, the equity in your house, your <coughs> bank accounts. Interesting. So it's just so much easier and it's not very expensive at all. Is there any time that you'd recommend someone being a sole proprietor? Is, is there a reason that someone should be a sole proprietor versus a LLC? <laughs> pictures on not going to get sued. Uh, maybe. But, <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> right. But there's, so you, there's no real reason that anybody should really ever be, a, if they're in business, they really shouldn't be one. Well, and I joke about the CPAs, but you know, some CPAs will say, well, just get started in business. You can't right. afford to set up an LLC. And so I say CPAs or cannot protect. So, you know, when your CPA says just start as a sole proprietor, remember, yeah. They're good at taxes. They're not good at law. Oh, you got to have them on your team, right? Yeah, you got to have them part of your team for sure. But yeah, I, I, it is unique because you, I see a lot of people that you, if you will, right? Uh, just because they maybe can do it for them or something like that, and there's right. really not a reason to do that. They're things, right? Well, you need the team, yeah. right? Don't ask me to do your tax return. Sure. Right? With your CPA to come up with the right structure and taxation. Uh, kind of the negatives, right? The uh, the mistakes, the pains, right. uh, what not to do. I want to talk a little bit of time on talking about what to do yeah. uh, with, with viewers watching right now and so forth. Right? Let's talk about how to fix this uh, right. to a certain degree. And I know that probably the easiest answer to fix it is call Corporate Direct uh, or go to CorporateDirect.com and call Garrett and he'll fix it for you. But let's just talk through how they would go about, what does that look like, right? So how, how would someone, let's create an example here, a hypothetical, uh, let's pick a state. What's a good state that, that, that uh, someone does like? What's a good state you like? Not, Why, for, not for asset protection, just a, oh, just a general state you like. I like Utah. Utah, all right. So yeah. if someone's here in Utah, and, and uh, let's say that someone in Utah uh, has six years, uh, they're, they're a lawn care, you mentioned that a while ago, they they're, have a lawn business now, uh, they're probably, let's just say they were a sole proprietor in this example. How do they fix this? How do they, how do they solve it? Well, this? they could set up a Utah LLC right away, Okay. right? Utah is one of the weaker states though, but on a lawn care, business, I'm not that worried. There are not that many assets mm -hmm. in it uh, from the outside attack, the car wreck attack. If they got in there, you know, what are they going to get? On the inside attack, it's the same in all 50 states. So Utah will protect you as well as Wyoming. Now, let's say you have real estate in okay. Utah, a Utah LLC real estate. I would certainly have the Utah LLC owned by a Wyoming LLC. And that's an easy fix. If you have a Utah LLC that owns title to property, just know that it's one of the weaker states. And all we have to do is add that Wyoming LLC to be the owner of the Utah LLC, and then you have much better protection. Okay. Now, in a business setting, let's say you like the idea of Utah or Nevada entity uh, for your you can, uh, uh, in Utah, you just continue into Utah. In Nevada, we merge in. But there are ways to get your entity to Utah, I mean, uh, or Nevada. Okay, so let me go through this example. Let's say that we're in Rhode Island. Yeah. Okay? Uh, we're on the other, other side of the country now. We're in Rhode Island. And uh, we're in Rhode Island. We have a coffee shop. Okay. Can a person just immediately change? Maybe someone's watching and thinking, my God, I, how do, I, just, I need to change this. Yeah. Can they just tr change what they're currently structured as? into something else or they need to restart over new? Well, did they start as a sole proprietor? An LLC and they want better asset protection okay. from the outside attack, we can take the Rhode Island LLC and make it a white you know, coffee there. Right, which you have to do that either way. You have if to do that.
they have the, the qualification there. Right. So if they have an LLC, they're watching right now. They have an LLC in uh, Rhode Island for this coffee shop business they're doing, and they they're listening. Okay, man, I should do this thing in Wyoming. Right. They could just transfer the current. I have to start all the way back over at ground one. EIN number to change that. Oh, you nice you keep them. the. Uh, I mean, it's called continuance. It's the only state that I know that does it. So that it's really a terrific procedure. It makes it pretty smooth and simple. It's really for them easy on their side. Yeah. Um, and there was there would there be any reason for them to have a Wyoming LLC own a Rhode Island LLC? Is there something could. they could do that? Yeah. What would, what would be the benefit of that one? Uh, if you if you got in that horrific car wreck, uh -huh. right, and uh, you know they want to go after the coffee shop, mm -hmm. they have to fight through Wyoming to mm -hmm. get at the Rhode Island LLC. LLC there. Now the one wrinkle there is most businesses that see are also going to be taxes and S corp. Right. Right. We okay. can minimize payroll taxes that way. With LLC taxes and S, it has to be owned individuals. It couldn't be owned by the Wyoming LLC. And okay. I know that's kind of deep into the woods, but that is just one reason why we would just, you know, you could bring, go to taxes and S Corp. That would work. If you're going to help someone in, uh, say in Rhode, Rhode Island for a second here, this, this coffee owner uh, in Rhode Island also owns real estate. Yeah. So let's say they own a duplex down the road that they rent yeah. out to different people. Uh, is your kind of uh, opinion, not an advice, but just opinion here, that they should have different? No, I would like to keep the uh, assets segregated. Okay. Yeah, you wouldn't put a business in with a piece of real estate, right? Okay. If the business gets sued, they can get the duplex, mm -hmm. right? So we want two separate LLCs there. Then when it comes to real estate, how many properties do you put in one LLC? I hear that question a lot. And it's a judgment call. Okay. Right. I have some clients that say I only want one property per LLC, mm -hmm. and that's fine because if the one property can't reach all the other properties, LLC. Mm -hmm. I have some clients who, put, you know, two or three properties that don't have a lot of equity into one. Will hardly ever see one LLC with ten properties. Okay. Just not good asset protection. Okay. So if, if a a job somewhere, right? Yeah. They've invested in real estate for retirement, whatever it may be, uh, and they, they have four or five rental properties. Kind of opinion, you would you would lean more towards putting them in individual LLCs. Right. Let's go to my, uh, uh, one of my states that I, was Georgia, right? Yeah. So let's say it was in, out of Georgia now. Would each of those LLCs be based out of Wyoming? With each no. Of those, I would have be. the five Georgia LLCs, okay, right? Because that's where the property is located. If okay. you get sued by the tenant, Georgia law applies. Jurisdiction right? is going to be in Georgia. Yeah. Then. So the five Georgia LLCs are owned by that one Wyoming LLC. Okay. And if you get in the car wreck, the outside attack, it doesn't have anything to do with the Georgia real estate. Uh -huh. It's a car wreck, right. right? They want to get at the five properties in as the owner of the five Georgias, you've created a block, mm -hmm. right? It's a block. They can't, they have to go get the charging order in Wyoming. Wyoming to get the charging order, and they may not get any distributions. Let me back up for a second, because when I hear that, it sounds almost complicated to me. Yeah. I'm a business owner, let's say, and I hear five LLCs. I think five checking accounts, five right. checkbooks, right? Five, uh, five of everything, five tax returns. Correct. Is that how it works, or yeah. is it, it, you have to have all those different things? Well, on tax returns, the, the Georgia LLCs are single member LLCs, uh -huh. right? There's one. Okay. So the tax obligation flows from the Georgia you don't have to file a federal return. It flows into the Wyoming. Okay. And if you're the one owner of the Wyoming, it flows to you. Mm -hmm. So you're not doing. Okay. Does it make sense when someone says, "Oh, I have to five different LLCs"? Is that quite as complicated as what it sounds right there? No, we make it pretty easy for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. I, I would have thought that it would have been, uh, you know, all these different check accounts, all these different payrolls from everything. Or is, it, or is your, are you running it out of the Wyoming and that's where you'd pay people Well, from? I want the Wyoming to be passive. I don't want it to do business with anyone. Okay. Right? Because if the Wyoming LLC got sued. Right. Inside. Wyoming to be passive. But it needs a bank account. You need to flow the money through there. Hmm. Um, but, you know, everything's done electronically now. I mean, it's, it's not that hard to move money from a Georgia to a, a Wyoming.
right? And and there's all these different types of trust and so right. forth, right? Uh, do you do you have any do you do, corporate direct? Do you guys do any trust or anything like that? Do we you don't set those do up? trust. You don't set those up right there. Right. What's your give me some uh, opinion or, or or thoughts on a trust? Are they needed or are they not? The right. living trust helps you avoid probate. If you die intestate without a right. will, or die with a will, uh, you have to go, your, your uh, heirs have to go to court, okay. and the court supervises the probating of the estate. Okay. And the attorneys make a bunch of money right. in these cases. On the probate side? On the probate side. Mm -hmm. The fees are generous to the attorneys. So for example, on a million dollar property that's, uh, that's probated, the attorneys make $20,000. Right. And it avoids having to go to court and pay those fees. So I like the living trust for the probate avoidance. Okay. But too many people sell them as an asset protection device. The, the living trust. The living trust. They offer zero asset really? protection. Zero. So, but they work together. The Wyoming LLC gives you the asset protection, uh -huh. but there's no probate avoidance with it. The Wyoming LLC is owned by the living trust offer asset protection, but it gives you the probate avoidance. So they, they dovetail, they work together. Now you hear a lot of people talk about the trust or like a living trust has all this asset protection, but in reality you're saying it has no asset protection. Zero. Does it have, what about when it's kicked down to the next generation? Does it kick in asset protection at that point to them at all? Uh, well, unless you, the living trust directs things to go to an irrevocable trust. Asset, you're not protected. So that's the land trust side. Any, I heard this this term a lot called land trust. You hear that terminology mm -hmm. a lot, right? Especially in real estate. Right. Up either. I don't set those trusts up either. Uh, uh, what do they do for your land trust? Good, bad. That's is a it, good question. What do they? What do, do they for do you? for you? Zero asset protection. Again, zero asset protection right. land trust. Right. Uh, is it just more of? of I'm gonna use the word, not the right word, but hiding. The well, they sell them on this idea that you have privacy. Right. But let's say that uh, your property is held in a land trust. Okay. Right? And a tenant sues because they're in. Mm -hmm. Right? So they publish notice in the newspaper, and you're not going to get that notice. Okay. Uh, as well, your insurance company needs to know if a claim is being filed promptly. Right. Right? Uh -huh. Doesn't make sense. You're going to lose your insurance coverage. Okay. Right. So the the land trust uh, we just don't use. A tenant, the LLC has a registered agent. They can serve the lawsuit. You can get notice to the insurance company mm -hmm. and get the claim covered. It goes back to what you said earlier. Insurance is super important on the asset protection right. side of it, not, not to ignore that piece of right. it, right? The other thing about the land trust is they say, well, geez, you're gonna have an attorney be the trustee, right. and the attorney doesn't have to say who the beneficiary is. It's a matter of attorney-client privilege. Uh -huh. That doesn't work. That does it, not it, work? It does not work that way. You know, I'm not gonna go to jail because I'm not gonna tell a judge who my uh, right. client is, right? Yeah, That's what could, could happen. Yeah, because a judge is the one that could actually kind of make you say, or, or in their jurisdiction. Right. If it's an LLC, you have asset protection. If you're the beneficiary of the land trust, you're personally responsible. That's another thing that a lot of people talk about of it, a promoter of the nope. land trust, really at all, it sounds no, like. we don't and do it. And it also sounds like going kind of also gives you that little bit of that, that privacy. Correct. Uh, that a land trust kind of would as well. Wyoming right. already does that for you. Yeah. So you don't really, there, therefore there's really no reason on that side to have Right. Interesting, man. I want to talk about, I love this piece of you, uh, studying you. Uh, we have a connection in baseball. Yeah. And uh, my office, I got all kinds of baseball memorabilia You've and You've so got forth. some great stuff in your I office. I got some good stuff in yeah. there. I got some good stuff in there. And we're going to go talk more about that in there. But I, uh, I, I noticed I love about you that you're a part of the American Baseball Foundation. Right. And uh, you sit on the board of advisors there. Right. What is that about? How do, how, what do you do there? Do, is there any connection? Do you, are you a big fan of baseball? Then? Oh, I love baseball. And okay. I wish these players would get back to playing. I know I, right I, now they won't play. You I mean, they arguing. could become superstars right now if they were in front heroes. of the public. They exactly. become heroes right now. I don't know and who's advising them, but they're, they're getting bad advice. They need Garrett Sutton to advise them. Exactly. If you're a baseball player,
talking about the, the the pay, how much they're going to get, and the unions getting involved into right now, and it's like, man, America needs the pastime. Well, and they would have the exposure; they would become instant superstars. I know it during this time yeah. period. That's crazy. I don't get it. That's crazy. But you're so you're a big fan of baseball. Yeah. Uh, did you grow up playing it as well? A little bit. I what? didn't. I didn't play uh, in high school. You got a favorite team or anything like that? I'm an Oakland A's fan. An Oakland A's. Oh, go for the other Bay Area right yeah. there. Right? So you're the Oakland A's fan. Uh, fan there. When is the last time they have won a World Series? Uh, uh, I don't know. That has been. That has it? been a. It. Eight, nine or eighty-eight. I think. 88. Was, a, was the last yeah. time they won it there? Wow. Yeah. That is, uh, and you're still a fan. No, 89 was the World Series. Yeah, they won it in 89 against the Giants so during the uh, earthquake. 99, 2009, 2009. We're, we're coming on 30 years yeah. of, not, of them not winning, right. but you're still a fan. Uh, please don't rub that in. You know, I, yeah. have this, I have this theory on the sports where it's like, if you don't win, I don't want to cheer for you. It's a yeah. weird, uh, people call me bandwagon fan sometimes. Yeah. But it's like, if I'm going to spend my money, jerseys and your and go to the game, I want to see you produce... Uh, maybe it's right. the investor side of me. I want the ROI, <laughs> uh, and that's why I'm an Alabama football fan. Right. Uh, and and your foundation here is actually out of Birmingham, Alabama, right? Birmingham, right. Alabama. There. Right. There was a connection there that you kn you know uh, the guy that runs it. You you. Yeah. The executive director uh, David Osinski and I have uh -huh. been friends, and uh, we we did some uh, business long ago, and he needed a corporate attorney, and if I can help out a baseball foundation, you like that? By huh? all means. I love it, man. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, okay, let, let me talk about this right here. Given your success in business, right? You've been an attorney now, I think we said, for close to 40 years. Yeah. Corporate Direct uh, has been there for about 30 years 30 now, years. I think. How many corporations have you set up? Uh, over 10,000. Over 10,000 corporations. Yeah. Look, given the success, advisor with a rich dad, right? Time author, soon to be eight time, right? Yeah. Author there. If you look back, what would be some of the maybe core success points that you've had in, in your business? You, maybe you look back and say, man, this was a big... So, uh, thing that I live by, or the secret sauce, if you will, of Garrett, Garrett Sutton here. Early on, we had some uh, business failure, uh -huh. right? And people are like aghast, oh, you had a failure, but you learn so much more sure. from a failure. Yeah. No matter what you do, if you get out there and it doesn't work out, learn the lessons from that uh -huh. and use it for the future. Yeah, so so your, your big success there is always using the, the failure as your catapult, if you will. Well, and it helps me advise clients, too. Sure. Because I've been through, you know, if you get out of law school with no experience in anything, right. I mean, how can you advise clients? I heard this thing about attorneys one time, that in law school, um, the asset protection attorneys are kind of the smallest group, if you will, of attorneys, because it's almost like the attorneys that are going against the other attorneys, the litigation attorneys, if you will, and they're almost like they have to sit at the other tables at lunches and so forth. You know, it's worse than that. Most schools don't even teach asset protection. Really? Yeah, you they have to go out it. and, you, you know, you'll learn corporations sure. and uh, partnership law, but they don't teach asset protection. So it protection. is true then that it's kind of a... So you have to get it on your own. Wow. Yeah. So it is a very, very specific uh, process there. But I will tell you that the trial attorneys probably would not want you at their table. <laughs> yeah, because you're really... <laughs> Right there. Let me ask you this. I'm going to do some rapid fire questions with you here. Uh, we're getting closer to the end here. Let me, let me knock out just the first one that comes to your head or, or first phrase that comes to your head. Off the top here, here we go. I'm going to go through about f uh, six or seven of these right here. What comes to your mind when I say TikTok? My kid. A scale one to 10, how important is it to build a personal brand? Eight. An eight on the scale one to 10, the personal brand side. Uh, single family homes or apartments? For you. Apartments. Apartment buildings for you is your, is your game there. Capitalism or socialism? Oh my God. Capitalism. You, capitalism Come on. Is it? <laughs> Would you let anyone on the show who said socialism? Man, I, I uh, probably to argue. Yeah. Okay. I'd probably do <laughs> right. Because such a, geez, man, I, I, it's just to me, what's built is what's made this country great. You know what I mean? It's what's built who we are and what we've been there. Being the Soviet Union falter. Yeah. Right? I mean, these kids have. History. I mean, look at all the the wreck right. from socialism. Yeah. And you want to do it again? And they want to go back to do it again, right? Know. All the different countries that are out there and try to compare us to it and so forth. And uh, yeah, then these new bills come out. And I had a great conversation yesterday. It seemed like it's just like inching closer and closer to it, uh, little by little. I think mm -hmm. it started with uh, all the kids winning trophies in, in baseball <laughs> right. when they didn't win, right? Right. Uh, okay, investing in real estate or stocks. Real estate. Real estate over stocks. Scale 1 to 10, how important is it to have a college education Two. in today's world? 
two and a half. I'm glad my kids do, but you know, really, you, wow. I, I think that if you can get out there and find that right niche, uh -huh. it doesn't require a college degree. Interesting. You know, except for and, all the license tools we talk about. And of course, if you, with your case, as an attorney, you have to have the degree, oh, right? Oh, of course, yeah. Or doctors and right. so forth. Is that where you're getting the two from, basically? Because yeah. you have to have those. You have to have those. But besides but that. In this day and age, I think, you know, uh, Emerging from college with huge student debt yeah. versus getting a job that would teach you uh, useful skills right now uh -huh. and, and being employed and then figuring out how you could go entrepreneurial right. wise when you, when you have the opportunity. Instead of starting out with $200,000 in debt, starting build, building assets right off the bat. Yeah. I think that's a great way to go. Do you see that, this, does it seem like those schools have grown uh, or, or adapted to where we're going, meaning with, with entrepreneurship and, uh, and, and business and so forth. It seems like they're a little bit more older style. Uh, yeah, uh, but teaching. I mean, uh, let's face it, a lot of these professors te are, are anti-capitalist. Yeah. Right? The, the government is supposed to take care of all of us. Right. And so I think some of the kids coming out just don't have the, the wherewithal to, or the understanding that they in this country can do whatever they want. They can go out and create their own uh, business, yeah. their own real estate empire. No one is stopping them from that. It definitely seems like a lot of that like infiltration where it's slow drip of, from the professors, if you're not against them at all, but from the professors, like this slow drip of, of socialism or, or anti-capitalism, maybe you yeah. know about that. And then it kind of overlaps, and then the student gets out. And, and instead of having that, what you talked about earlier, you had that thing where you, you and your friends got out of college and went straight to business. Yeah. Like, right, started right away. And it seems like the, the colleges have adapted. And the other thing I think you mentioned earlier, maybe it was in the back room, talking about how they, they haven't adapted to teaching money. This is a big thing for Kiyosaki right. as well on the financial side. But they haven't, they haven't adapted to teaching money in colleges or, or, or even grade schools or high schools. Some schools are, but you know, Robert tried to get uh, a curriculum into the Arizona Gee. school system wow. and just was met with uh, resistance every point of the way. You know, in part because the, the, the teachers have to teach, right, right these certain subjects. Mm -hmm. Like, we, how many times have you used algebra? Uh, you know, but they know. have to teach Zero. it, right? Yeah. Um, and then the other part is that a lot of these teachers are not friendly towards entrepreneurship. I know when I was in school, right, it was, it was almost um, against, it was very like, do this, do this, do this. And as an entrepreneur, at least for me, I have a very creative, big thinking uh, right. mind. And it's almost like it stifles it, and, and they want to stifle it to a certain degree because they want you to memorize these facts or these data that, and so forth. Uh, I wish they would, uh, uh, and it's unique that you mentioned Kiyosaki tried to change it. Yeah. And he was met with massive opposition there. Correct. And that was just in Arizona alone. Correct. And John went to of Utah over here, uh -huh. and uh, in his social studies classes, I mean, there was obviously a bias, wow. and to get an A on the paper, you had to write according to the bias, yeah. and then he asked and forget everything they said, but to the grades, he had to write Abide by their what they philosophy. wanted to hear, and, and how many kids are believing that and not understanding that it's bias? Right, because what if he didn't have a father like you, yeah. who had the other side of it? thinking, hey, this is exactly where this is supposed to work. Right. This is coming from my professor. It's an authority for figure. 25 years, he's right. been here, and that alters that piece of it right there. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's go to this one. Uh, a funny one. Warren Buffett or Jimmy Buffett? Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett over Warren Buffett. Nice. Uh, Android or iPhone? iPhone. Uh, this goes what we were talking about a while ago. Uh, buying real estate in red states or blue states? Red is Republican. Yes. 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 So you'd buy them in red. I will never buy in California. Is that more just because uh, again go by the laws and, and, and not being landlord friendly? It's that. Yeah. And it's kind of this attitude towards uh, wealth creation. Uh huh. It's all, again almost what you just talking about. It's almost anti-capitalism yep. there. Right. And they have it in those states as well. I know there's a lot of laws, and, and I do the same thing. I buy in red states because the laws are sometimes built for landlords versus built for tenants uh, in those right. states right there. Uh, you know, one of the reasons that we did this whole brand, um, uh, Garrett, was we call about the money is. And I told you earlier, we have a sign here, and in my office, we have these signs up everywhere. And, uh, and we always have this question of money is blank. And it means, money means different things to different people. And right. there's no right or wrong answer, I think, right? right? You just have to know what it means to you. Okay. And uh, this is why we started this whole brand, we love it. And we try to ask this question to everybody, and we get some, 
very uh, mundane same answers and we get some really cool unique answers. Okay. And uh, so I want to I want to get you this and I'm going to get your uh, uh, highlighter here or sharpie here. Uh, write down your answer here. Okay. This word, sentence, whatever it is. Sign it right here and then I'll talk to you about why All right. it means that to you there. So you can take this right here. Well, this is kind of cool. I'll get you it's a good good photo of you. And we're going to hang that in the wall. Another lefty. I'm a lefty. A lefty. Yep. I'll try and write clearly. All right. And I'll try and spell it right. And it, it always gets nervous when the pressure's on, it's spelling it right. If you don't, we'll redo it with you. And I'll spell my name right. So you're a lefty too, huh? No, I'm a righty. Oh, okay. But it just, it's just unique because several people in the show have been lefties. There we go. Let's see what the word is. Nice. This may be one of the first time we have this one. There we go. Money is, where those reading right there? Independence. Money is independence. You want to get it over here? Why does money mean independence to you? What does it mean? Why? Well, we've been talking about current events, and, and they're, they're people that want to take our money yeah. in our society. And I think we need to make the connection that by taking our money, they take our independence. Interesting. So money and independence, for me, go hand in hand. Yeah. And uh, I think at some point, I don't want to get too political, but at some point we're going to have to stand up to this movement I agree. and say that this is enough. Right. Right. We are a capitalist society. We have created a great nation right. using capitalist uh, thought. Right. And this idea that you get to tear everything down yeah. and pretend like 10% of you equal 80% of the population. Right. I don't buy that at all. I love, I love your answer there on the independent side. Uh, the very first one that we got so they're in money does provide uh, independence correct uh, for people here uh, I'm gonna give you this last little uh, section here and I just want you to kind of the last thought uh, words of wisdom if you will for, for from Garrett Sutton here what would be some of the the, the last uh, takeaway that you would tell the here of what to do how to do if you will what's the words of wisdom in this closing session here for you what would you tell them well as we discussed they're not teaching this in school right right and so that you're putting on this program and providing yeah. education is terrific, right? Yeah. And so you're providing a great service. Thank you. And uh, through the podcast and everything else, you have to gain this information right. on your own. And then at some point, you use it, you right? We all hear about the uh, paralysis. Yeah. At some point, I knew when I invested in my first property, I was going to make mistakes, all right. right? And my wife was okay with that. You yeah. know, we're going to make mistakes on this first one, but we're going to get past it. Right. We're going to learn how to do it, and we're going to, uh, when we retire, we're going to be able to have our real estate replace our income, mm -hmm. right? I like that. So uh, that's, that's what everybody should consider doing. Now, if it's not for you, that's fine. But in this country, no matter what your background, you can invest in real estate. You yeah. can start a business, and don't let anyone tell you you can't. Yeah, educating yourself, right, constantly, because no one's teaching it, and then you got to take action. Right. Massive action inside of that. And you see that in your own life. Yep. Constantly educating yourself, constantly learning, and then also constantly taking action. Right. It, it was help you get to where you're at right now. That's right. I absolutely love it, Garrett. We've had a wonderful time on the show. Uh, we got, just make sure everybody knows, you got the new book coming out this October. Right. Uh, give me the title one more time. The scam, scam Proof Your Assets. Scam Proof Your Assets coming out this October on Amazon as well as corporatedirect.com. Correct. You can go to. If anybody needs to get a hold of you for, for entity advice, or uh, yeah, at that point you could be advice because they'd be hiring you, if you will. Yeah. Uh, then they could go to corporatedirect.com. Right. Find you there. Uh, I know you're not huge on social media, but what is your Facebook? Is it just your name, Garrett Sutton, as well? No, I mean the best one where we post articles and all would be uh, it's called Sutton Law Center slash Corporate Direct. Okay, Sutton Law Center is the yeah. best place to find you yep. over there. Uh, as well. Absolutely had a wonderful time on the show with you. Look forward to having you again as well. I also look forward to heading to the office and go deeper with you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank you guys for watching. We've enjoyed having you on the show today. We'll see you next week on The Money Is Show.